In this video, I'm going to show you three exercises you can use if you're struggling with ITB syndrome. Iliotibial band syndrome affects so many runners, and as part of an ITB syndrome rehab program, you need to make sure that you're covering mobility work, stability and activation work, and strength work for those all important glute muscles. And in this set of three exercises, I'm going to show you how you can cover off all those things in one go. Okay, so for the first of our exercises in this ITB syndrome routine, what I want to do is show you a stretch for tensor fascia lata. TFL, little muscle that lives up around the outside of the hip, and when TFL gets tight, because of the way in which it blends into the iliotibial band, the ITB, it can start to cause extra tension through the ITB, which can be contributing to ITB syndrome itself and that pain around the outside of your knee. So let me show you, let Marcus show you, a simple TFL stretch. Marcus, I'm gonna get you to put your right leg, sorry, your left leg up onto the step for me or onto the, uh, the box here. And the box should be at around about knee height for you. So let's just test that out to begin with. About knee height? Yeah. Spot on, perfect. Okay, so let's get up onto the box with that left foot. Now in this position, what I want you to do is step across yourself slightly with that other leg, okay, the standing leg. So you should be slightly crossed over. I want you to try, although you're crossed over, to keep the hips square on. And in that position, squeeze your butt and push your hips forwards a touch. You should feel a bit of a stretch through your hip flexors as much as anything else. Yeah. How are we gonna turn that hip flexor stretch into a TFL stretch specifically is reach up and over with this arm. Okay, now with this arm reaching up and over, we're creating almost a kind of a bowing type effect through, in your case, the right-hand side of your body. Try and keep this knee straight, try and keep the hip pushing forwards, and try and reach over towards the wall. And you should feel a good stretch through the outside of the hip. Can you feel that? Good, good. I'm gonna get you to hold that to begin with, just 20 seconds, just statically in that position. But then we can add a bit of movement. And what I want you to do is combine the movement of pushing gently forwards with the hip. It doesn't have to be a big movement, so one-inch movements. Push forwards with the hip as you reach across to the wall. And that, it's not a bounce, it's just a definite intentional drive forwards and back should start to feel a little bit deeper as a stretch. Can you feel that? Yeah. Again, if there's any pain, stop, but you do that two or three times on each side. As well as these rehab exercises, if you're a runner who's struggling with ITB syndrome, be sure to check out the link down in the description because there's an article on my website which goes through all the underlying causes which you need to know about, you need to understand, you need to be able to deal with to be able to overcome ITB syndrome and your knee pain. Do check out that article. There's also a free download as part of the article which you can get your hands on to give you another set of resources for ITB syndrome. So the second exercise in our ITB syndrome rehab routine is all about strengthening glute med. Gluteus medius, one of the important hip muscles, really helps provide lateral stability around the hip. So if you see a runner who's doing a lot of this as they're running, then that is an indication that glute med isn't doing its job. It's not providing that lateral stability. And when we lack that lateral stability, muscles like TFL, the muscle that we started stretching in the first exercise, end up overworking. So a lot of the time, the pattern we see with ITB syndrome is weak glute med, overly tight TFL, therefore too much tension through the ITB itself. So an exercise Marcus is going to demonstrate now is fantastic for strengthening through glute med itself. Marcus, let's get you lying on the floor in a long kind of side lying position. Fantastic. And what I want you to do to begin with, exactly as you have done here, is create a cradle for your head. So the, the arm that's on the ground, you're going to bend it at the elbow and at the, and at the shoulder, just bring yourself up to a position where you can, with your hand, just cradle under your head so you're not just leaving your head flopping down onto the ground. Should be comfortable there for you. Yep, perfect. At the other end, I want you to focus on the lower leg and create kind of a figure four here. So this figure four is going to create a lot of stability for you. Okay, that should feel like a comfortable yet strong position. It's kind of like I'm putting in the recovery position here a little bit, but obviously not as you would do. Um, however, what I want to do is make sure that looking down, hips are stacked, shoulders are stacked. I don't want you rotated out, I don't want you rotated in. Kind of like we coach a side plank in some respects. You want everything nicely in line. But then we're gonna work with this top leg. I want you to keep yourself straight at the knee, okay? And from here, I want you to do two distinctly different movements. Okay, firstly, we're gonna come up 
And I want you to think about leading with the heel. So you're going to come up and then you're going to come back. Okay, and you're going to hold that position for 10 seconds, up and back. So we're abducting the hip against gravity and we're extending the hip in that abducted position. And as I'm talking this through, you should be starting to feel glute med beginning to work hard there. Okay, you're going to come in and down and relax. Okay, we're going to do that again, up and kick back. You should feel with that kick back that you're able to feel glute med kicking in, strike activation there. But I want you to avoid the tendency to, as you kick back, rotate back with the hips. Okay, we're going to keep them stacked. If you do have a tendency to rotate, rotate back with the hips, what I want you to do is take this top arm and reach over there towards the camera. That is taking you out of this stacked position with the shoulders. It's creating a bit of rotation through the torso, but with this rotation, it's winding you up so that you can't rotate the, the opposite way with the pelvis. It keeps your pelvis honest and therefore forces you to work through the hip. I know I'm supporting you there, so hopefully you're not working too hard. But try again now with this reach and kick back. That should feel very glutey. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Okay, we've been looking for 10 times 10 second holds with this on each side. If you get really good at that, you can start extending out the time period holding wise to a point where you're even up and hold for 30 seconds. And you do 30 seconds on each side two or three times through. That's a real challenge. 10 times 10 second holds is a good place for you to kick off. Okay, so the third and final exercise in this little collection of ITB syndrome rehab exercises is what we refer to as a fire hydrant. So we're gonna start out just so far away from the wall that you can, without having to lean over, just get a bit of a fingertip touch. So come across just ever so slightly. There we go. So the wall is there for stability, uh, nothing more. Okay, you're not gonna be relying on it. Want to work specifically on single leg stability. So it's an interesting exercise because you're going to be balancing on one leg, but really the work is going to be done with the other leg, but you'll feel the effort when it comes to stability in that standing leg. So what I want you to do is on this standing leg, so we'll use your inside leg relative to the wall. So your left leg is a standing leg. You're gonna just slightly bend the knee and just bring the other leg off the ground, just picking your heel up so that you're in this kind of figure four type position. Lovely. From there, what I want you to do is focus on a similar movement to the movement we had in our side lying leg lifts. Okay, so our glute med exercise. I want you to drive out against the band and then back slightly with the heel. Okay, and then you're gonna come in and back. Good, you're gonna work through those. You're gonna do 20 of those. Keep a bit more of a bend in the standing leg if you can. Little pitch forward with the torso. It'll help you get a little bit more, little bit more extension through the hip or relative extension through the hip. Keep your chest up, good. Out and push back. What can you feel? Nice. Yeah, it's a really good exercise because it challenges your glutes in two different ways on the two different sides. So to create this abduction and extension, you're having to work through those glutes on the, on the, the moving leg against the tension of the band. But the tension of the band is also trying to pull this standing knee in towards the midline. Can you feel that? You're having to work really hard on the standing leg around the hip, again, those glutes, but in a very different way to produce the stability. Do you want to turn yourself around and do 20 on the other side as well? Yeah. Good, so standing knee, little knee bend, gentle pitch forwards. Okay, and then it's pull and kick back and in and back. Don't rush the movement. Work through the bigger movement you can control, if that makes sense. So after a point, as you pull out, you'd have to pitch over to the side. And I don't want you to do that. It's only working through the size of motion that you have the control of. And over time, fatigue will start to creep up. Now, of course, you've also just had the benefit or challenge of having the legs doing the opposite on the previous set. Okay, so you're probably carrying a bit of pre, uh, bit of fatigue into this set as well. Can you feel that on the standing leg? Yeah, yeah. yeah not surprised. Again, I've said sets of 20 for Marcus because I know he's good for it. But if for you, after 10 or 15, you're starting to really feel this and stability and form goes out the window, then break at 10, break at 12, break at 15. Give yourself a bit of a, bit of a shake, swap legs over and go again. Form is everything with these. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to go and check out the 30 day challenge on the Kinetic Revolution website. Again, the link is down in the description. It goes way beyond ITB rehab. It's all about introducing you to a regular routine for mobility work, strength work, stability work, all the injury prevention work that we need to, as runners, 
make sure that we make time for in our program. It's a free resource, just head on over there, throw your email in and get the full program.